Hi everyone and welcome to this free episode of TF. It is myself, Riley, and it's I'm here with the Milo. Free one. Yeah. Doing the thing. I'm I also usually determined sounding there. <laughs> I'm yes. also it's the free one here with yeah. Hussein. What's up? As as well as uh, Alice, who recently has been under the weightless knife. Yes, who has described that, that's, her that's recent a, eye surgery. A to her. Fascinating way of describing it. Yeah, I got my eyes lasered up. I had. Terrible eyesight. I was like a minus six or a minus seven diopsid prescription. I was really, really fucking short sighted. Mm. Um, and so Monday, I just uh, got my entire eyeballs just like reconfigured with a big laser, and it was fucking terrifying. Now I'm just in like the sort of like week long fussy aftercare thing where it's like oh, you yeah. have to do all of these eye drops and you have to do them very precisely. Otherwise, yeah. uh, you, know, you got to pray to Ra. It, well, the good, yeah, the, the like good news yeah, is, exactly. is that at the end of all this, you'll have the glowing eyes that all the Bitcoin guys have, right? Mm. Did you see that I literally changed my, my Twitter avatar to my old one, but with glowing eyes? <laughs> <laughs> I think what what I think is most fun though is that if you don't do the eye drops uh like at the beginning and end of every day then you do transform actually uh into uh, event horizon. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm. What well, that that's that's the really funny thing about like antibiotics as a class of drug as a concept is they make you feel much better and in fact they make you feel better so well that once you feel better, you want to stop taking them. But if you stop taking them, it gets way worse than if you just hadn't taken any. I want to yeah. look. There, you may think it's odd that we're starting an eye surgery corner, uh, but the one thing I found very oh, it's amusing, personal interest. It's it's parasocial. Yeah. You know, you feel closer to me as a person for learning about my experiences mm. of having uh, of having a guy just point two lasers at my eyes. I th- it was mm. terrifying. What I thought was very funny about it though was you described how rushed it was, which is exactly not the kind of uh, feeling I would expect. Yeah. From a laser, like like you get in, the doctor's like, "Hey, quickly, get in! Come on, sit down. We don't have a lot of time." Quickly. That, that is uh, that is basically Bye-bye. that is basically how it works. My like, wife doesn't know guy... I do laser eye surgery. <laughs> <laughs> there was a guy ahead of me who, like, uh, mm. literally, I I saw him come out with his eyes visibly hurting. And they're like, "Next." <laughs> I was like, "Okay, cool." Um, <laughs> but like, I I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just like needy, right? Maybe I'm 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 not that type of girl. But I I when I want some someone with like expertise to be working on my body i want them to be the kind of like uh ah hmm interesting sort of deliberative expert whereas what i got instead was the i'm just going to stick this in your eye now uh-huh. zip, yeah. what, and and you can you're about to say hey don't stick that in my eye but it's already in yeah. that's the kind of expert that i got yeah um, you know what it is you got mm. you got the kind of uh you got the kind of expert that is sort of in quite a b- few action movies kind of since Marvel, which is mm. is sort of so good at what they're doing that they just seem bored and distracted while doing it, mm. which yes. is yeah, yeah perfect. I love... I, I, I got shot up it. with the James Bond smart blood, uh, all of yeah, this. Yeah, my, my eye surgeon, Doctor Strange. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I thought it was weird how after I stumbled out clutching both of my eyes and then just heard from behind me, so that just happened. <laughs> Uh, don't be don't be perturbed by the name Doctor Strange. It's actually a <laughs> moniker. I I got this name because I love pussy. <laughs> <laughs> this is yes. This is my orgy name, not uh, my doctoring name. <laughs> don't I, know. I introduced myself. I used to really. be a gender reassignment surgeon. Not that you'd be interested in that, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, 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 everyone. Getting the laser gender surgery. Yeah, it's really fast Getting as well. Oh, it's real fast. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's really quick. Like the, the yeah, girl, the dick just comes off. You're yeah. like, uh, and it's mm. just gone. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the girl in front of you comes out like visibly in pain. You're like, wait, are you supposed to do something about it? No, no, no. Get in here. Come on. We don't have all day. <laughs> You wouldn't well, mind just putting is, your the- ankles on my shoulders? <laughs> we'll get started. <laughs> well, the thing about the, the rushing you through it thing is that it is, like, obvious psychology, but it does kind of work. Like, getting kicked out of there ten minutes later, I had two thoughts. Thought number one, 
Ow. Thought number two. It can't be that bad because they're just kicking me out ten minutes later. <laughs> so I, 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 I was easily manipulated. That's right. Yeah. Well, I didn't even realize I was dead till I got home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like it was like the final killing blow in like a samurai movie. Like you get all the way home mm. before you start to fall apart. Like Patrick Swayze <laughs> putting my hand through the front door. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Uh, it's hello. Weird how none of you recognize me. Hello, hello, mm. hello, everybody. Welcome to TF, the episode where we're talking about some stuff. Um, mm. Look, before we um, we carry on, though, uh, I have some, some some company stuff to talk about. I got some British politics because Britain's lost the the governing party of Britain, or the the whole governing consensus mm. of Britain is fully lost the mandate of heaven. Oh, but, it's it, it's imploding. But, it's fully imploding. It's going to be terrible. But I also, you know, how we talk about like where the real politics is now is in movements, specifically mass movements. Um, organizing, yeah, sure. yeah, to get to organizing yeah. to get what you want the out of men of Edinburgh and so yeah, on. Yeah. And so. <laughs> that's that's where the politics is now. It's not high up in the um, uh, 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 sort of upper echelons of yeah. politics. That's entertainment in Westminster. Radio call in people asked. Do you remember when the bin men were hard and the bin men <laughs> arose like sleeping giants from their slumber? <laughs> so, yeah, they were like the king in the mountain. So oh, yeah, anyway, yeah. we've so we we sort of agreed on that. And I think one of the most exciting things with the last few weeks has been another sort of grassroots movement based um, sort of mass actual political movement for change. And what I'm, of course, talking, I'm sure many of you know what I'm going to be talking about right now. What I'm talking about is um, it's the Norwegian Tesla Owners Association going on hunger strike. So Elon Musk will fix their terrible cars. Um, uh, what a sentence. Yeah. A sentence that if you'd have said it to me 10 years ago, I'd have been like, what? Yeah. <laughs> of yeah. course, yeah. Norwegian Tesla? Yeah, the, it's the just, Tesla it's, 6 it's just is such, becoming known. It's just such a mismatch of tactic and issue, right? Like, you say hunger strike to me. I'm expecting... Bobby Sands, I, I don't know what I'm expecting. Example. I'm expecting yeah, yeah, yeah. some heavy shit in general. Like, if you're willing to starve yourself, I'm, I'm expecting a sort of a life or death issue. And the life or death issue here appears to be uh, Mr. Mr. Epic meme poster, please make the cars work good. The Iranian Tesla Aloners Association, which is named <laughs> after Bobby Sands. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so, uh, yes, the, um, it, it, no, this is mostly reported on blogs and so on, so do take this with a grain of salt. Uh, it is mostly here for uh, comedy purposes. Mm. Um Oh sure, but if, if you are Norwegian is and is not legally actionable, <laughs> I mean, I, 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 if you are, if you are a Norwegian and a Tesla owner, maybe just try it, see yeah. how you feel. Uh, you know, I, I do. I want to. I do want to yeah, say. I think I, I've developed a pretty good nose for these things over the last I mean, few years. I, it does feel yeah. real. I was just going to say that. Is, is is it like? Are you sure it's not just like an intermittent fasting bit that like they're doing <laughs> for like well, hustling and stuff? It's Norwegian Ramadan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Norwegian Ramadan's got a. Oh my god! Though, like, that, I, no yeah. rotted fish from dawn until dusk, and of course it is day twenty four hours a day because it is summer in Norway. Yeah, no, Norwegian Ramadan is you just die. I, I do yeah, find it very it. cute though. I do find it kind of cute though that like they've sort of gone to these lengths to get a senpai to notice them and. So mm. Senpai isn't going to notice him. He's too busy. No, He's no. too busy, like talking about his breeding kink on on Twitter. And if, yeah, if if you want Elon Musk to notice you, you have to post a like you have to be kind of okay meme on like nine gag that, or images yeah. that he thinks is funny and will either steal. that or be a very young and like um obviously fertile like woman. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. If you're be, not be a, a Canadian songstress of some kind. <laughs> no, so, uh, here are the details from uh, Clean Technica, a blog I never thought I would cite except to mock. Mm. Uh, details are scarce, but it seems that a number of Tesla owners in Norway, fed up with ongoing customer support and vehicle quality issues, are now on hunger strike in a bid this to is, get Tesla to fix their cars. Th th this news comes to me in the format of like a paradox game sort of news event from a country across the map. <laughs> you know, like the fools fight among themselves kind of thing. Um, Elon Musk getting a letter that's like, if, if I do not get my Tesla fixed, I will murder suicide my entire family. And someone going, <laughs> Mr. Musk, he's Norwegian. He means business. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I didn't understand this at first. When you first told me about this, Riley, I, I thought that what you meant was that they were like hunger striking against the Norwegian government in order to get more like <laughs> Elon Musk stuff that he wants. But no, no, they're, they're, they're actually protesting the like. God Emperor of memes. Yeah, well, it's the um, yeah. it because the thing is right. Like, if you remember, it's always important, I think, to remember mm. what these things were supposed to do, right? Yep. As opposed to whatever goalposts they've set for themselves that day. In addition mm. to having like autopilot or whatever, 
the whole point of Tesla was to change the world by replacing the internal sure. combustion engine on a mass basis with electric cars. Now, as imperfect as they are, and as much as we talk to Paris Marx about this and so on and so on, we can say, like, at least, sort of, electric cars, if, like, the lithium is God and ethically and all that, huge, gigantic, unsolvable ifs are kind of better than internal combustion engines. Fine. But sure. in order to do this, the strategy was instead of, say, providing people with, providing, like, a low-cost electric car, was no, to make it, electric it, it cars was the cool. re- yeah, it was the reverse Ford. You build a luxury car, a few people buy it, that pays for the slightly less luxury car that a, like, a few more people buy, and you keep going down that path until you can build the like uh, electric car that everybody can buy. We're trying to build an electric Rover Metro. That's yeah. what we want to get to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But they, but they didn't do it. They just stuck with like luxury toys for... Uh, you know, software developers. It is the rich so kind of funny that, like, the, then the, the pinnacle of what you're looking to achieve is the shittiest electric car imaginable. Like, that's what we're oh, trying to get to. We have a list of their gripes, but before I yeah. do that, I'll say that <laughs> we want an electric Ford Ka, and we will not stop until we get. There. <laughs> they, they have. I, mean, I kind of do, to be honest. I would love a mm. shitty little electric car. We, they have. They have also arranged their Teslas by driving them into. So there's approximately, I don't know, maybe. 17 Teslas or so arranged into mm. the word help and then photographed from a drone. The Beatles are going to be pissed off about that. Of course they've got a drone. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's the Norwegian Tesla Owners Association. You know what? when Gayatri Spivak wrote that essay, Can the Subaltern Speak? They're whatever is the opposite of the subaltern. I normally use the drone to film me and my wife having sex in the woods. Mm. But on this occasion, <laughs> I put it to an important political process. <laughs> I mean, I, I think about this occasionally, and I, I guess maybe it just it hits different if you have everything you want to not be able to have one thing you want, you know? Like, maybe that's the way that it, to explain all of these like people who are insanely privileged, uh, like, genuinely starving themselves, maybe. Yeah, well, I mean, mm. we don't look. We don't know the details of how on we, we don't know. It, it might be a tall tale. Yeah. It might be a fable. But let's let um, again. Let's just assume for the sake of argument, it, it, it contains it contains a spiritual, yeah. metaphorical truth. Uh, so, would you all like to hear the list of their complaints? I would love that. This is from their website, the Tesla Owner Association Norway website, which is now kind of like I don't know, like the electronic intifada of like <laughs> like thirty <laughs> white guys. <laughs> um, so. Uh, they they've said they've said also we are the canary in the coal mine because Nor- Norway is by far hey, the number one thing. Tesla country in the world. Mm. The list of complaints is as follows. Oh, that's not a, that's not something to be proud of. Number one, the car won't start in cold weather. Uh, that is an issue <laughs> in Norway. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> However, issue number two, the car won't start in warm weather. <laughs> ah. I'm sensing quite because a climate narrow change. operational band yeah. for Tesla. Like, well, because of climate change, they have that now there too, as well. And they're, they're the perfect car for Britain, where it's never warm or cold. Are you suggesting that Tesla is the perfect? It'll only start when it's like sweater weather. Yeah, exactly. That's that's exactly the uh, like yeah. like what you'll yeah. do, right? It's, it, you know that you can still you have three cars, right? You have like your car, your backup car, and then you have your Tesla, which you know you can drive. If you go out and it's you're like pumpkin spice latte yeah. season <laughs> car, and, and you're it's, like it's Mr. Autumn car, I could, yeah. I, you know what? I should wear a light jacket. Yeah, you know, it's exactly. it's it's the car for when you have when you can see your breath just a little bit. The leaves are ah, yeah. oh, what a lovely time for of sort year. of October, April, oh. these kind of months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's mm. it's it's a good <laughs> kind of months. <laughs> months such as these. Yeah, um, the next one is just <laughs> you could push that to March. I'm sure. Yeah, it depends on the March. <laughs> yeah, uh, early May. I don't know. Yeah, but it might get a bit warm. Mid November, perhaps. Uh, okay, based on the year, you could drive your Tesla for up to seventy days. Yeah. Depending. I mean, what you don't realize is that the Tesla Tesla was built in a very specific microclimate, and that needs to be respected. (laughs) So, here's the next one. Intense squeaking noise. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no, I bought the Tesla dog toy by mistake. (laughs) I I drove this Tesla to a Norwegian dogging site. (laughs) Uh, But I was followed by all these dogs, which, despite the name dogging, is not actually good for the process (laughs) Um, of dogging. Bubbles in seats, which just means I think they're improperly sealed. Uh, Seats are loose. Trunk lid fills with rainwater. The next one appears to this be a- is so, sort of like Trabant build quality, <laughs> which I can understand would piss you off if you. Pa- How much does the cheapest Tesla cost? Oh, like tens tens still a lot, thousand, thirty thousand right? dollars, yeah. I think, for the Model Three, something like that. Yeah. Uh, cheapest. You, you could you could get a car that was put together by someone who was paying attention for that kind of money. <laughs> yeah, thirty five thousand dollars for the cheapest one 
with like fully limited by software, not a single mm. extra feature. It doesn't even have like the you know little like bacon games or whatever. Next, mm. uh, autopilot does not work. I mean, come on, that's we talked about that a billion times. Norwegian Tesla owners, you don't have to go no, on hard strike no, about but that. Like, I, I think that they do. I appreciate this new turn, and I hope that it gets out of hand. I hope that someone, like, I hope that they seize a province of Norway more or less by accident. <laughs> I hope that they end up sort of. I hope someone ends up on the phone to Elon Musk and a police negotiator going, no, you have to deliver us this impossible technology. Otherwise, one hostage every hour. Yeah, like, we, you know? we secede mm. from Norway and essentially... Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, because uh, that's the thing, right? They're, they're, if they're going to go on hunger strike until autopilot works properly, then... Uh, they are going to perish. <laughs> yeah, a number of people are going to inherit some Teslas. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're going to be a footnote in the annals of history. I remember when those Norwegian guys died about Tesla autopilot. <laughs> your, 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 your father left you this Tesla filled with rainwater. Yeah. Oh, were they hit by the car on autopilot? No, no, no. They died as a protest. Yeah, what, what, like one person. Uh, well, we don't know how many people have been killed by autopilot, but this is like on the graph. This is people killed by autopilot being autopilot. Versus people killed by autopilot not being autopilot. It's it's yeah. it's just it's such a weird. I I know I said this, but it's such a mismatch of like mm. tactic and cause that you just you want it to like go beyond that logical conclusion. I just I'm, I just picture the like. I, fuck, I think it's Stokely Carmichael uh, who said, like, you know, non-violence only works if your opponent has a conscience. Just that, but with a picture of Elon Musk above it, <laughs> and yeah. a bunch of Norwegian guys just, I like... want them to go full paramilitary. Like, they're, they're yeah, in, no, like, fully. They're fully. being trained by, like, former IRA you, guys. You think, like, maybe they should become, like, Shining Path, but for Norway? Yeah. <laughs> if Elon Musk does not accede to our demands, we will drop a paving slab on his head. <laughs> People don't know this, but Shining Path actually started out in a sort of similar thing in a beef about the customer service quality of Alfa Romeo. Uh, so <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, so, here's more, here's more. Internet is slow and does not work as it ought to. The wipers do not work well enough. Here's a real, really funny one. The car creaks and moans when you pass speed bumps and other bumps in the road. <laughs> it goes, bonus. <laughs> no, but, like, it's just, again, just a terrible fucking car. Yeah. Um, it, just, it, it just sounds like the car version of, like, getting old. Like it just it just makes a bunch of weird noises. It doesn't quite work as well as it should do. And and, and weirdly this has a real audio focus to it. Like someone is seriously paying attention to like how their cars sound in Norway. Well, my car constantly sounds like it's coming. We also have <laughs> uh, decorative moldings are loose. Lights do not work properly. Okay. Doors don't work properly uh, and that also like don't work issue. properly in the cold. Doors also- oh yeah, because the little handle won't come out when it's cold. I've seen videos of this. <laughs> oh. Guys having to like pour a kettle on the door handle of their Tesla. Oh, that's going to be pricey to open your Tesla. You're going to have to boil a kettle. It's oh, going to yeah. be, what, a tenner? Cheaper just buy a new one. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, lights, the lights don't work properly. Here's a dangerous one. The door opens by itself. Oh. Huh. Well, I mean, listen, we Haunted heard your complaints Tesla. about being being trapped inside the car as it caught fire, and now we decided to go the other way. Now the doors just open randomly. Yeah, well, you don't want to be yeah. in there when it catches fire. Yeah, you got a sort of Tesla poltergeist. Um, the computer. Yeah. Also, why why would you need the castle? You just wait. Uh, just wait for the door to open. <laughs> system <laughs> resets on its own, which seems dangerous for a mostly computer-controlled car. Um, problems charging and reduced power. Uh, rust problems on brand new cars. This is just a Trabant. It's just yeah, a Trabant no, with a game. I uh, know, Rust on well, a Trabant. It was made out of cardboard. <laughs> well, exactly. And a, it's and worse a Trabant, than a Trabant. Like, and a Trabant's cool. This is not cool. Uh, also, a Trabant, cool. you could only drive very slowly, which made the kind of poor build construction not not much of a problem. Whereas mm. Tesla has built like a piece of shit, and you can drive it at like 160 miles an hour. Yeah, mm. I think this is another example of something that seems to me to be orc technology, but it doesn't believe it doesn't work based on you believing in it it's just like normal orc technology a tesla is quite a lot like commuting to work by being fired out of a trebuchet like you'll get there quickly <laughs> but you're not you know it's not a guarantee yeah, is you gotta hit the mattress and yeah, yeah. there's a lot of potential yeah. issues the norwegian tesla so, the norwegian trebuchet commuting association has complained that the mattress sometimes is moved out of the way yeah, <laughs> doesn't doesn't interact with any of the existing uh, infrastructure because that's all for mangonels. My employer took down the big net, which oh. I usually land in. <laughs> Interesting, you should say that, Alice. Uh, uh, 
We were promised free charging through the car's lifetime, but all the new charging stations in Norway don't fit the car. Whoops. Yeah, because Tesla uses what? a proprietary charging plug that no one else uses or is allowed to use. Yeah, oh, amazing. You, How on you earth have to either get an adapter or hook it up to a, a Tesla charging point? How on earth that could pass? He could possibly have come through on that promise. No one knows. Uh, well, no, because it was it was intended to go the other way around. It was intended to like lock every other electric car brand into Tesla's charging infrastructure. But in a you know typical Elon brain move, what this did was lock Teslas out of everybody else's. <laughs> He's so cool. Mm. Um, finally, uh, th this is the last one. The last few are all kind of the same one, um, which is that uh, customer service is difficult to deal with and never gets back to you. Therefore, I. A riot is the language of the unheard by customer service. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, it's so funny. I love. I love. After all of a that. long train of like abuses and usurpations. Uh, yeah. No. I. I. I wish them every success. <laughs> yeah. You know. I will not press three for customer services. I will press the trigger of my FN file until my demands are met. Because <laughs> well, because because Nordic politics is weird enough that plausibly a couple of things could go wrong and these guys could end up being the governing party of Norway. Oh, what? So yeah, perfect. I, I, I look forward to that. I look forward to these guys having to elect a prime minister. <laughs> in like 200 years, being like, why does Norwegian politics have the Tesla party and the Nissan party? And people have been like, well, it's, right, it's it goes more of a sort of a, Yeah, it, it's a sort of a traditionalist thing. It's more of a yeah. big tent than it has anything to do with Teslas now. But I mean, actually, what if you look into it, what happened was that the... Um, the Tesla party was largely funded by the CIA in the 1940s and 50s in order to forestall communism. Mm. There's a lot there's a lot of crime in their history, you know, don't look into look, it. If only they'd got more paperclip Nazis into the te Tesla development program, maybe those cars would be a bit better. Say what you like about <laughs> Werner von Braun, he'd probably have built a good fucking car. <laughs> Well, he did. It was the Volkswagen. Yeah. That's the paperclip Nazi car. Yeah, there you, know? you go. Look, Volkswagen is a good car. <laughs> uh, so... Anyway, that's, it's that's so funny to me that the Volkswagen Beetle is like the Hitler car, and then it went on to be like, oh, the adorable hippie vehicle that Hitler so loved. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was only below. Look, Hitler said hello. You still say hello, right? He drove yeah. a Volkswagen Beetle. Um, no, uh, I, I want to talk about some some stuff because basically, you know what happened, right? Is mm -hmm. um, yeah, they reinvented the Beetle, and then to take the heat off of it and its hippie years, they gave the world some cars with Hitler mustaches. <laughs> No, um, so basically, right, you know how we've like ever since, um, you know how interest rates were at zero when they were going to have to stay at zero forever or the economy would break and then, you know. Yeah, yeah. because we made the economy Stupid. not real. Yeah. Oh, in order yeah, how's that going? Facilitate is that going well? I hope it is because um, <laughs> I've got I've got some stuff going on. So, yeah, well, have you <laughs> Riley, I really need to stocks. tell me that it's going well. Yeah. Have you invested in Klarna, Compass, Hellbiz and Bird? Uh, yes, companies. but unfortunately, I did diversify my uh, my portfolio into uh, the uh, stock of the Tesla Norwegian Dealerships Association. <laughs> so I'm hoping that. And you've also got a lot of investments in the British pound, I hear. Yeah, <laughs> British pound. Yeah, um, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff in a uh, bulb. Yeah, um, yeah. I think. <laughs> I think things are. Well, I mean, I'm bulb. Not... You would have found out about by now. Oh, would I? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> you see, I've not been opening my emails. <laughs> for exactly this reason. Yeah, look, just so long as it... it look, well, just so I'll long. always have my Enron stock. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, you haven't also been opening your normal mail? No, oh, no. No, 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 nothing like this. No, no. So I'm off the grid, baby. We're, yeah, we're, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, you're off the grid. You're fighting with those yeah. guys in Norway. You, you, your last act was to like buy a bunch of Bear Stern stock and then rip all of the copper wiring out mm. of your walls. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I've also got a bunch of Bitcoin and bored apes. Anyway, like, yeah. look. I, oh boy. Well, I've got some crypto stuff for next time. Yeah. Um. No, no. We're gonna revisit like several old friends in pretty quick succession because my goodness. Um. That's the problem, though, with when you make our prediction, right, which is that all of this economy is fake. All of these things that are being heralded as the next big thing, right, the future, they're all kind of just nothing. And everyone who buys it is either in on it or an idiot. Mm. Um, sure. That when sure. we're proven right, the problem is, is that it's surrounded in a much larger catastrophe because, unfortunately... These... Yeah, the problem is you, you can't even laugh about it and be like, I told you so, because everything's on fire. So because that's the thing, like, oh, no. Klarna and Bird... Uh, and fucking like Compass, all of these moronic companies were unfortunately the kind of membrane separating, like separating sort of things sort of ticking over and getting worse mm. at a constant rate from things getting worse 
uh, at a very rapid uh, rate. A yeah, there's sort of snares yeah. in the economy mine. A, a, a change in the intercept rather than the slope coefficient, if you get my meaning. It's sort of a two-way street, right? Like, uh, for a while, the economy had to be fake in order to prop up these companies, and then it sort of, you know, became such that these economies had to be propped up in order to keep the economy fake. <laughs> because if the economy became real, then we'd be in some real trouble, and that better not ever happen. Of course. So, I wanted to start by revisiting our old friend Klarna. If you recall, Klarna is... Uh, I believe the largest techno or was uh, the largest technology company in Europe after Wirecard blew up. Yeah, uh, the, the the gist of it was if you wanted to buy like I don't know, say like a pair of shoes or something, mm -hmm. next to the buy button you would have a little Klarna button that was like, "Do you want to pay for this in X number of low interest installments?" Right. Yeah, I I love how basically the biggest fintech company in Europe is exactly like the worst nightclub in Europe title, where everyone who has the title is like, "We used to be the second worst nightclub in Europe, but then it burned down." <laughs> like we used to be the second worst fintech in Europe, and then that one burned down. <laughs> so basically, if you remember, SoftBank invested in them at a forty-six billion dollar uh, valuation. Um, yeah, for a small button on every like web page that no one's mm. ever clicked on. Correct. Yes. Um, oh no, people were clicking on that button, baby. Mm. Really? Well, the, well, the I don't thing know is, anyone who ever clanned it. Man, my so my one of my exes, who was an independently wealthy woman, his would name regularly. Was that's right. Her yeah. name was Klarna. <laughs> uh, yeah, her name was Klarna Norwegian Tesla. You might know. Um, she uh, she would regularly Klarna stuff. I think just oh. for the fun of it, just because like she'd be like, "Well, I don't want to pay for that now," and I'd be like, "But you're rich." Well, what do you? Don't, don't, it always 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 puts me in mind of like the sort of like black cards, like the prestige credit cards. Like you don't need a credit card. Mm, well, why, why you're just doing that to get the fucking concierge service? Well, yeah, exactly. Here's here's the thing. Um, Surely the person who is like bringing the biggest returns to a credit card company is someone who is just scraping by, and mm. therefore they should have the black card and the concierge uh, service and the number you call to get sucked off at any time. Yeah, Hello, it's... sir. Would you like to make another purchase which you cannot afford? Well, yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. Their, it's like Klarna's valuation. You, you should get like a call from a concierge at like 3 a.m. when you've just made an unwise purchase to be <laughs> like, oh, thank you very much. Would you like some. You know, did you just go and see a West End show? Would you like some like uh, reservations for? Dinner at like El Bui oh, or whatever. Burger cunt. Very good choice, sir. Uh, very <laughs> good. So no, Klarna's valuation is now um eighty five percent lower uh than at its peak, uh because its losses have a uh, quadruple. Because Milo's ex yeah. started mm. paying for stuff outright. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And they all, but again, were those losses lessons? Yeah, a hundred percent. Right. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it was. Um, it, yeah, it is. Its losses have quadrupled as they realized that, uh, oh shit, we forgot to make money. Uh, oh no. And, and we can't just keep getting higher and higher valuations with like cheap fake credit uh, that, to keep this whole thing sort of shambling forward. Wasn't there a thing that they were taking the payment from the retailer? So they were like charging, like you still paid 30 quid or whatever for your shoes and you didn't pay any interest, but like they charged like the top shop or whatever. I don't know who's the retailer. The problem these is, days, three quid. As then... long as people, uh, if, if there's any sort of, their business model didn't seem to have much of a... Um, uh, 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 stretch built in it for, for example, if times are tough and suddenly it's very easy to acquire, it's not very easy to acquire new customers will very dependably pay you, pay you back. Uh, mm, so right. they seem to be um, in major trouble because also they mm. can't just keep they can't just keep getting people to like value them higher and higher and higher, just absorb those losses. Oopsie daisy. Uh, uh -uh. I want to move on. Use the investor capital to absorb your losses. Uh, I'm also a very trash future. Maybe. Another, another, another one. Now. This is one we talked about a while ago. Uh, it was called Compass, and uh -huh. their main thing was that they were the WeWork of uh, real estate brokerages in the U.S. Right? They were the <sighs> oh yeah, I remember this yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, yeah. don't want to be the WeWork of anything. Uh, well, do you have you read about WeWork? Well, this was... the guy who was the WeWork of everything is now doing a big deal about how much of a not WeWork of stuff he is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh no! If you remember, I, well, I remember this because I'm you know because of course I do. Uh, but if you remember, if you remember, um, the uh, Compass had a big blog post that was just entitled "Why We Are Not Like We Work." Uh. <laughs> There's uh, no we in work. No, but there no, is an or, <laughs> and you could call us We Work, or you could listen to this rap we've composed. No, absolutely. Uh, so, right, they they actually say right, it's 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 a real estate agent. How they grew, right, was they were just paying huge amounts of money to buy other 
um, to buy real estate brokerages and then just have their client books. They said they were a, a tech company mostly because they had a website. We're mm. very familiar mm. with this, right? It was valued yeah, yeah, at $6.4 billion. Um, and after selling $34 billion uh, in homes a couple of years ago, uh, they made zero profit from doing that. Nothing. How? Not a How? penny. Uh, look, I don't know. The economy <laughs> hates to see a girl boss winning. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it just they absolutely- had a 0% profit margin on a $34 billion turnover. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And also, because, okay, what's shocking about these is these are business models that should work. I mean, like, Uber obviously had a business model that was never going to work, like, much like Netflix or like loads of these companies. But, like, mm-hmm. you know, Klarna, that's just money lending, right? That they had oh. a business model. They were charging someone for that. There, there was a service being given and someone was paying for it. It wasn't like a crazy. This one, similarly, selling houses and taking a commission. Yep. Again, that's a business model that famously works. Electric cars. Yeah, selling electric cars. Like, people buy them for money. Yeah. You sell them. This, you should make money from this. Well, I, this is what, what CEO Robert Refkin said. Short-term profit... This is in 2019. He said this. Mm-hmm. Short-term profitability is something that uh, many of the more modern companies are not focused on. Okay, cool. What uh-huh. about long-term <laughs> profitability? Um, I, I, and so they've... W- were, they, were they focused on that? Well, they long-term that, profitability right? is famously the thing that the wizard does. Yeah. Of Short-term course. profitability is what you decide whether to do that or not. Because like it's the mo- most of the business model, I and mean, we this is so we sort of talked about this while it was all happening, right? When we were sort of talking about it from like 2018 onward, right? Mm. The business model of that period, and we could see it while it was happening, was just to convince someone to take a bet on you. You didn't really have mm. to deliver a service to anyone. Uh, yeah, pyramid like, scheme. M- Machio Susan, um, David Cameron. Uh, mm. Mark Andreessen, yeah. but like, yeah, now it's just all of those sort of bad bets are coming due. Well, what yeah. if short-term profitability scared off the wizard, and then he didn't give you your long-term profitability? Um, mm. and, and, and the thing is... Very skittish wizards. And uh, oh, yeah. this is another thing they said in 2019, we're not yet at a stage where I have a clear monetization strategy because no one's ever really talked about it. Right. <laughs> you, you, you were an estate agent. <laughs> <laughs> The, the the strategy, as Milo says, surely suggests itself. Mm. You, 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 you sell the house. Yeah, you get and a then, badly and then you... fitting suit, and then you go around, <laughs> yeah. and you go like, you, yeah, you, it's you got put, a nice aspect. You spend 90% of your budget on a set of vinyl decals you apply to a Mini Cooper, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. you drive around in between houses that are falling apart, and you sell them to people who want a house, and yeah. you charge them too much, and you take a commission. And crucially, you tie, you tie your tie in an arcane knot of such a large size that you have to get it handed down from estate agent to estate agent, like no normal person knows how to tie that. Have you considered that maybe they haven't spoken about how their business works or whether it's even viable because they are uh, spending their time talking about mental health and checking in with their blokes, which uh, I, I personally find very amiable. Yeah, that, that is the status of Trash Future as a, as a business. <laughs> so, uh, Does it make money? Don't know. Do we have Patreon subscribers? Haven't checked. Right, is that- mental health? Checking in the fuck on that. Absolutely. <laughs> So interview, So this one real estate academic who was then interviewed by Vice uh, about this subject said, Compass is the world's most unprofitable brokerage ever, <laughs> which is a quite dubious wow. honor, I think. Yeah, yeah. You should get a little trophy for that, I feel. Well, the trophy is uh, that they're a, making- A little gold-plated, very wide knot tie. The Trash Future Award for Accidental Socialism. Well, I mean, I feel like the, these when you people, make no corporate profits whatsoever, see, they are sort of living in a kind of post-material utopian world, mm. almost where you know you you don't have to be of con- it's not of concern to you whether or not you are um your activities are doing capital expansion, right? Because the capital expansion is coming from somewhere else. Mm. Like the capital expansion is just coming from all of the cheap credit. That's yeah, where it's coming off map. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you're doing is you're just living your dream. You are uh, working for eight hours, fishing for eight hours. Uh, you're farming for. You're just doing whatever it is. That oh you want. no, we yeah. we accidentally made full communism, but just for these guys, and it's very temporary. You've got the cheat codes on in The Sims. You're just going to the blue gnome that hands you out more money every time. It's yeah. like Mark Andreessen <laughs> or whoever. And so you sort of just stumble into a business do kind of the same thing that everyone's ever done, mm. but most of your actual economic function is to make PowerPoints for investors so that they can continue to pump up the value of your business. And mm. here we're just just seeing these people realize in real time, oh shit, we forgot about the other thing, the actual use value of the thing. Zero use value was produced. 
except mm. accidentally or incidentally. Um, and, you know, I think it's going to have also some real knock on effects for political consensus. Right. Mm. Because no, yeah, it won't. because like the main thing, right, that these are just like these are just the biggest fish in a world where we basically our policy just said, OK, well, in the absence of any product, it's a growth. world full of fish and I'm <laughs> dumping car batteries into the ocean. It's going to kill yeah, some sorry. of the big fish, sure, but it's also going to kill a huge number of the smaller yeah. fish. It's also going to kill my need to get rid of these car batteries, <laughs> which <laughs> I've right. got built up over the pandemic. Where else am I going to put them? The compost? Don't be ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, in this case, That's where I keep my used motor oil. <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, but like th so much of the political consensus in the US and UK is based on one of the most politically engaged classes of people always getting a kind of double subsidy from the working from working people. Yeah, well, it's it's two things, right? Pensions can't go down, and neither can the value of your yeah, house. Yeah, correct. Uh, because in order for because of your pension has to stay up, and that's more of a UK thing than a US thing. But the value of your house is basically another massive, gener mostly generational subsidy, right? Where in order to get stable housing. Someone has to set you have to essentially be like a fucking soft bank, just chasing the value of whatever it is that you're buying by just dumping money into it with, again, cheap, easily available credit. Then, hey, whoops, you've got a gigantic mortgage. Um, and, you know, a lot of normal jobs aren't directly dependent on like this zero rate environment that's now gone. Right. And a lot of the people who are leaving it are just going to, you know, again, these are God's perfect morons. Right. They've been in adult daycare essentially since they graduated. And now they're like, Head of product at you know Kazoo or whatever, mm. <laughs> you know, and, and mostly their day is like email and donuts, right? Kazoo, the company that makes harmonicas. Yeah, but it's it has a website, so it's <laughs> oh, right, worth yeah. forty billion dollars. Um, yeah, it's spelled with a U. We're redefining the harmonica. <laughs> um, uh, so like, but so those jobs aren't really what you're worried about. But I think the the, the they'll be fine. Um, the political consensus that will sort of fall apart. Like, there's something that's probably going to change. Right. When all of a sudden, you know, this very politically engaged class realizes, hey, wait a minute, I'm no longer OK. Well, I mean, generally what happens when a sort of uh, otherwise totally privileged class starts to feel threatened for the first time is that they start supporting fascists. So, you know, just just, just know that. No, this time around, around, we have Prince Harry who can come in and go, it's OK not to be OK, matey. Ah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, As a bloke from a bloke to a chap, I can tell you that when I was out in <laughs> Afghan. I saw a lot of estate agents just like you, and a lot of them were, you know, their Mini Coopers had been blown up. They were, they were just short. They didn't know where to go. But then I took them to one side and I said, listen, mate, you'll find a house to sell again. <laughs> um, and yeah, that, that's Straighten up that tie, pal. <laughs> It'll take you <laughs> upwards of 10 minutes. Yeah. And, and, and we know that Compass is now cutting jobs. Um, I've heard from an individual who listens to the show that the cuts. We call him Mr. X. Yeah, I've, I've, no, that's, um. We'll call him Prince H. No, sorry, that's too obvious. Um, <laughs> P. Harry. Yeah. Everyone's favorite Clapton wine bar, P. Harry. Mm. Um, that's a joke for all you Clapton heads out there. Um, mm. no, so, uh, that, that the layoffs are going to be much more extensive than are currently announced and are largely based on the technical team, which, oops, forgot to have a technology. Uh, uh, uh -oh. common mistake. Uh, anyway. This is from uh, Newsweek, and I think we can expect to see a lot more of this, uh, which was just quite strange. Recruiter and actor, because mostly they hired recruiters, because mostly what they were doing was just trying to buy existing real estate agents. Sort of, sort of less of um, mm. less of a business plan, more of a cult. Mm. Yeah. Recruiter and actor Isaac Moran recorded his theatrical ex exit from real estate brokerage Compass in a video that has delighted the internet, amassing nearly eight hundred thousand views. Number one, that's rookie numbers. Come on, a that's not that delighting has delighted the, internet. the internet. That's delighting mm. a mid-sized British the internet city. Went, ooh, um, and so uh, that, that, to be fair, that would be one of the biggest cities in Britain. Yeah, what big? So and that would be second only to Birmingham. Moran showed up, showed up in the Google well, Hangouts London, call obviously, but. with his department head and an HR representative. He told Newsweek, entering the call with a long pink wig on his head and a glass of wine in his hand. So what's essentially going to happen is a mm. lot of the. Uh, most childish people in the workforce uh, are probably going to um, make uh, epic videos of them getting fired uh, because their entire mm. industry has been proven to be fake. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Excellent. Um, so last one, last one before I want to talk a little bit about politics after this, but last one. Do you all remember the concept of micro mobility 
or hey, why are all these scooters everywhere all of a sudden? And it just happened overnight. Oh yeah, yeah, because it was going to be a key part of getting like cars off the streets, right? And greening our cities mm. was you could get a little uh, scooter or an e-bike uh, everywhere. And uh, councils loved that because it wasn't very expensive, and you could just put them everywhere. Uh, and you could put your name on them. You could it'd be like you'd tie your reputation to them. You could have a Boris bike, even like that's. Uh -huh. Ugh, on 4K, so bird. Uh, you you you're cringing. <laughs> yeah. You are cringing. Uh, uh, no. and, and you keep making noises like. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I'm guessing that maybe all is not well in the house right, of e-bike. Tommy hurts. No, no, I'm afraid not. Um, most of them went public by SPACs because around the same time that the SPAC craze was happening yeah. was when the micro mobility craze happened. So they sort of crossed over. Well, and SPACs, so stuff that goes public via SPAC is always like the best companies where lots of due diligence has been done on them, right? You know, you know what's really funny? Because that was my understanding when I invested in a, in a lot of them. Is that one of these SPACs, because basically, if you remember, go back to our episode on SPACs if you need to remember what this was, but uh, why this was, but it's to do with the structure of how it's issued, is that a SPAC is basically. More, it's successful for the people that did it if it stays over ten dollars, right? If it goes below, because that's the the base value of whatever of, of your share in your spec. Um, and, and so even if it goes down from its peak, if it stays above that, then you're sort of you're you're, you're sort of doing okay. One of the few that's actually still above ten uh, is uh, Truth Social, which is very amusing. <laughs> uh, Donald Trump is carrying it solely on his shoulders. Yeah. So you have to, you have the, to ask. the website where where Donald Trump responds to search warrants by federal agents. Yeah. Basically, is, Donald Trump's that's a blog. business. That's yeah. a viable business. It might be the first one he's Amazing. ever owned. I mean, I'd, yeah. I'd subscribe to that. Yeah. So uh, it's it's still like way down from its from its issuing price, obviously, but it's at twenty three bucks. So you know, very amusing to me. That, yeah, that yeah. legitimately may be the most successful Trump business. Donald project. Trump finally found his calling, not as a real estate developer or as an entrepreneur, but as an entertainer. Yeah, you People know what? Wanna, they want to hear from him. Yeah, they want to yeah, hear who's much. got handwriting like a psycho. Yeah. Um, so, micromobility. Bird uh, announced in May 2021 that it was going to go public uh, by merging with a SPAC at a valuation of $2.3 billion. That's um, a lot of dollars. <laughs> and in terms of not just valuations, but actual funding that went into huge valuations, there's about $5 billion of venture funding that went Great. into scooters. Not even just not, not combinations of scooters, bikes, but mostly scooters, right? Mm. Um, and uh, so uh, bird shares are now under 50 cents each, or a valuation of only a couple hundred million. Whoops. Whoopsie daisy. Huh. Ooh, it's taken oh, like no. a ninety percent haircut. Yeah. It's not, not great. <laughs> no, that's not that's not ideal. Um and the it says the company founded by former Lyft and Uber executive Travis Vanderzanden. Tell <laughs> name, <laughs> name, name, name a lot. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. Touted itself as a solution for last mile transportation. But the thing is, again, uh as soon as the economy became real, it had to increase its prices. And so now a ride on a bird scooter is like more comparable to a short Uber ride than like getting on, for example, public transport or a bus if it's not in a privatized, you know, if it's not like in a yeah, privatized yeah, yeah, public yeah, transport yeah. system. But right? certainly in like a big city where like yeah. buses are reasonably cheap. Yeah, yeah so sure. it's, it costs six dollars to ride on a bird for an average, average, average distance, which is much more than taking the subway. How much That's does it insane. cost to? Uh, s how much does it cost to steal one? Oh, uh, that's uh, free. Oh yeah. wow, good. That's uh, so a little life hack here. A little quick tip. If you think it's a bit expensive riding riding a bird scooter, you can just like not why pay. why have they put the price up that high? It doesn't make any sense because surely right okay an Uber you've got to pay for the petrol, you have got to pay for the maintenance of the car, you have got to pay for the driver. Mm -hmm. This is just it's a fucking scooter. Like if I bought one, it wouldn't cost me six quid to ride it for twenty minutes. Like the electricity and the wear and tear on the scooter, given the cost of these scooters, which is like a hey, couple hundred, it just can't possibly be that much. Travis Vander Zanden, are you listening? <laughs> you've you've, well, you've, out, is, you've priced gotta, yourself out of the market, Travis. Well, well, the thing is, it's got to pay for both the guy who keeps the website running. Ah, yes. It's got it's got to pay for the the pay lobbying for Travis various Vanden. councils, and yeah, and most of all, it's got to pay for Travis Vanden Zanden. Um, yeah. So the other thing is, though, like it's it, this is actually um, uh, something Dan uh, Dan Beckner of Bottleman fame, and uh, I think that's mostly what he's known for. Uh, it was talking, so I hear. Yeah, was talking to me about about his tour in the Pacific Northwest. And he said that the housing situation has gotten so bad there 
that there are sort of quite large, sort of almost like Hoovervilles, essentially, that are uh, springing up um, sort of not just like, like, like enormous sort of uh, populations of, sort of unhoused people completely ignored by the state and everything except to brutalize them. But the one common feature of a lot of these places is enormous piles of just broken and abandoned scooters from a plethora of almost defunct brands. Oh, cool. yeah. So they're, they're going to be like a sort of a stratum. When when all of us get like buried under you know layers of our own trash and stuff, there's going to be a distinct sort of line that future future geologists can track and be like, that's li-, you know that's like compacted fossilized scooters. Yeah, this is this yeah, is nice. the, the, this thin layer of lithium is what mm, we call the, the scutaceous st- period. <laughs> yes, the, the stupid yeah, era. Don't, don't, mm. All this turf shit, like, oh, people are going to look at your bones and like think that you're a man. Bullshit, my bones are going to be in the fucking scutaceous layer. They're going to think Alice was a scooter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they'll find some guy like underneath the rubble of broken scooters wearing a BuzzFeed hoodie, like jacking off. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and they'll be like, oh, this dude rocks. Yeah, and, and the thing is, right? Thus misgendering. <laughs> uh, uh, mm. yeah, they're they're going to get so good at Q angles in the future. It's going to be a real science. <laughs> like, that's yeah, like. I don't even get this BuzzFeed hoodie. <laughs> I do sometimes think that about archaeology because you know how, like, for example, barely anyone in Ireland gets cremated because they're mostly Catholics, so they don't, mm. don't believe in it. Whereas, like, almost everyone on the island of Britain does. Are they, like, archaeologists one day are going to be like, I guess everyone on Britain just disappeared. The island still have loads <laughs> of people. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, so here, here we go. Right. The other thing, right, is that is it is it that these these scooters uh, were sort of shitty and terrible. They were co- much like Uber mm. for, sort of foisted itself on um, mm. on on Europe, especially these like bird would just foist itself on cities. And again, I looked back at some of the headlines from when mm. Bird was you know hey, hey, Riley, foisting. Hey, Riley, yes, Alex. Can, can you say foist a bunch more times? Uh, I sure can. Um, Thanks. This is one of the headlines from foisted the, by his own baton from the foist era. <laughs> Mm. Uh, it is number one, which of course is uh, is uh, old timey Brooklyn for first. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can ride birds e scooters in London starting today, but unfortunately only in the Olympic Park. They're basically oh. like trying to induce you to be like, we demand the scooters, give us Gabo. Yeah, they want you. They wanted you to go on hunger strike for the scooters. Well, I mean, whilst but they didn't have the kind of like animus behind them that a Tesla, they needed does. some Norwegians. I mean, mm. I, I, I mean, whilst I think the scooters are are kind of stupid, and I, I find it very funny that there's like there's a certain brand of like uh, teen who's like who loves who loves scooters, and they're like they're kind of you can tell they're trying to look hard on the scooter, but it's like you're on a scooter, come on! <laughs> I don't care how electric that scooter is, you're still on a scooter at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I, they see it seems it's a shame because it seems like it's the sort of thing that like could be a reasonable idea, mm-hmm. you know, like if it were not run by the most insane people. Well, for example, if there weren't seven different competing companies all it's you know what it is? It's the scooter industry is the farce of mm. the sort of late nineteenth century railroad industry. Right. Uh, okay. Right? Where you had all of these again like competing So what you're saying is that we need to nationalize and consolidate all of these scooter startups <laughs> into mm. British scooters. Um I actually think that would be quite fun. Because I mean and, realistically- and then we, we 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 run that for, you know, some period of decades and then eventually the Tories get the idea to privatize it and we just do all of the old startups again. Yeah, well except that this time like for but Bird is now completely indispensable for our like infrastructure and yeah, advantages. Yeah. yeah. Costs a yeah, thousand and, and also pounds to get on. Yeah, and also it's like owned by the French nationalized scooter industry, and mm-hmm. it's just called Bird to like recall a sort of yeah. nostalgia for the SDF. original. Yeah, yeah, Scooter de France. Yeah, Scooter de France. No, so this that was the first one. S C O U with the little hat on it. T E R. The next one. UK laws prevent scooters from being used on roads and pavement. Um, but personally, I would have thought about that before. They changed I that law, though, didn't they? Because you can never yeah, ride them on the road. Of this. Now, yeah. But yeah. Bird is in the process of, of changing that. Of, excuse, excuse me. Uh, but Bird is pushing for legislative change. Again, there is this. Um, I think there is this attitude in, in in press once again of you know your parents don't want you to have sugar smacks, or in this case, you know. Uh, that society doesn't want you to have a bird scooter that you can ride around in the they pavement. They don't want you to scoot. They, don't they w- say no scoot, <laughs> but we say fuck you. We want to scoot. Yeah, but and you know we're not gonna ha- we're not gonna ha- we're not gonna have this. Look, when naysayers suggested that all of these sort of shitty, uh, poorly built, 
like lithium bat like every a lithium battery per scooter also for sure right mm. um that they're not just just gonna pile up as giant heaps of trash and sort of um you know neglected areas of town no no that's not gonna happen they're gonna be a part of the infrastructure oopsie daisy we didn't get a monopoly soon enough and now we had to jack up our prices before everyone needs us and now we're basically completely worthless that's why i say it's the forest of the late 19th century railroad thing right we had all of these different competing organizations that were trying to make themselves basically essential for the new way in which the country moved around mm. it's just the argument in this case was that we can make ourselves essential for the environmentally friendly way in which the country moves around and then mm. they, just what happened was that nobody doing it really had the guts of like charles yerkes like nobody had mm. the soul of a robber baron because they mm. came up during a very sort of you might say easy time mm. and so you know they were just sort of assumed that they would be buoyed on to sort of uh, 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 you know, sort of a soy forever. Daniel Plain view. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, you know, they, the fact is that they, they, we never got to the point where they actually became essential because it was a stupid idea that was promulgated by an idiot and then that was propagandized by a bunch of easily led fucking morons that like, call themselves the press. That's essentially what has happened. Uh, and that's why there are piles of these just lithium batteries that you know god knows what people went through to get them out of the ground just sitting in the fucking street uh of use to nobody because someone somewhere realized that they could basically just live their little dream of being a tycoon and that uh you know that masayoshi san would redirect fucking like a, a giant hose pipe of saudi oil money to them i know that softbank didn't invest in bird i don't think it did at least uh, also, someone got mad at you for mispronouncing his name. Apparently, it's sewn, like rhymes with bone. Yeah. So, oh, okay, you know, they, they didn't you're, invest. You're, in, you're also racist. Yeah, they didn't mm. invest in bird, but they invested in one called tear, which is completely identical. You know, so that's mm. uh, it's, so, it's, so some proportion of the scooters in that in that geologic layer yeah. will be attributed to Mister Masayoshi. Mister Masayoshi. Mister Masayoshi. Um, you know, and also, if you, rem I don't know if you remember this one. I barely remembered this one, but then I sort of jogged my memory. There was one called Hellbiz that was pretty similar. Hellbiz, yeah, that, that, I remember the name. <laughs> yeah, I remember being sure. like, "What a stupid name!" Yeah, it's publicly listed on the Nasdaq. It's run by an Italian, and if you remember, they were trying. Yeah, so, so his name is Lucifer Safin. Yeah, <laughs> you know what's yeah. up with that? They were trying. They were trying to um, combine uh, a scooter company. A media company because they had the broadcast rights to um they had, the, they had like a they, they had a, the broadcast rights to like the Italian Series B football um and also they had oh, a yes. cryptocurrency called Hellbiz Coin Hellbiz Coin um, didn't they weren't prepared to just go Hell Coin no no well that would have Hell Coin might have been taken already it might have confused mm. the Norse ah uh, yeah yeah you don't want to confuse <laughs> them. You don't, because they, they get mad when they're confused. No, no. Or they no. go on hunger strike. Um, the yeah. Vikings have gone on hunger strike until their longboats start working again. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's fun. Elongifor muscus yeah. is being uh, yeah, called upon. Uh, so, look, we don't, hmm. we, we don't have long left, but we, there's one crucial point from last night's Tory leadership debate uh, hustings that I want to point out. That's I want to talk about. We're husting. <laughs> uh, which is. Baby. I'm husting, Jerry. I'm husting. Which is, look, I, I thought that the um, the British governing consensus had sort of lost the mandate of heaven. It has proven mm. itself unable or unwilling to um, not even govern in the interests of capital, just like to govern in a way that connects with reality to ensure yeah. stability and so on. Yeah. Now, well, the, the, however, the joke that I made is that like it's the fall of the Soviet Union with no Soviet Union. Yeah. Yeah, However, yeah, yeah. Well, because in America, they have two parties, one of which is unable and one of which is unwilling. And in Britain, we have two parties that are both unwilling, which is the difference <laughs> between us and America. The, now, the United Kingdom is a one party state but with typical British extravagance. They have no parties. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So, uh, and, you know, we were going to I, look what I was get, was I going to talk about a few things, some reports from some, this is some British like Tory think tanks that I think were very amusing. Yes. But I want to talk about the one policy that matters. Which makes me believe that maybe Liz Truss can resecure the mandate of heaven for this country. Mm. Where she is finally taking the first step to abolishing police and prisons, which is abolishing the speed limit. 
That's too fucking right. Brilliant. <laughs> so like, get, getting, getting some fucking like Gaddafi vote margins from the BMW owners forum people. <laughs> like, I think, yeah. The yeah, M3 like, this... club of Great Britain is coming out for Liz Truss bath party numbers. It is really like the only <laughs> demographic the Tories really have left at this point, which is like yeah, sure. Range Rover owners who do genuinely believe that they should be allowed to drive 70 miles an hour on country roads, right? Yeah, um, through and insulate Britain like line of protesters. Um, yeah. Well, you know, it's, yeah, like the the, the Range Rover mum's uh, demographic, which I don't know. I mean, like it, it feels like a bit of a risky option, especially considering that, like, in a few months' time, a lot of those uh, people won't actually be able to use those Range Rovers on account of not being able to afford to pay like for petrol. But mm. Mm, I don't know. Like maybe, yeah, the fantasy seems it's, like appealing. Yeah, I guess yeah. for now, I. I, I think it's entertaining that Liz Truss has enough sort of like ASI psycho in her to mm. really genuinely do something or propose to do something libertarian, uh, where the Tories have typically not been very libertarian conservatives for the most part. It's not, it's not on the level of like American conservatives' self destructiveness where they're like, okay, we're going to make everybody pregnant off their meds, and then we're going to make absolutely certain they can buy as many guns as they want. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's getting there, you know? Yeah, but like proposing... Hey, shit, maybe she, maybe she, maybe she could fucking liberalise the gun laws here. Let's fuck around, see what happens. Yeah, propose you know? a maturity-based age of consent, you know, like, sort of like an 11-plus <laughs> yeah. type exam. There's like paedophiles <laughs> coaching 12-year-olds through, like, a calculus test. Like, come on, come on, I'm so horny. <laughs> You've got to nail this. <laughs> Um, yeah, and so, you know, I, I think it's, uh, Liz, Liz Truss maybe could save Britain from at least being a dull place in which to experience a very sudden social collapse, because if you've got a car, open up the taps, go for it, why not? Yeah, yeah. She's, yeah use the last of your petrol. Mm, she, that's the only good thing Liz Truss could do. Yeah, what well, just, because mm. it's looking at, like, the, the last rule that is, to be fair, pretty reasonable, uh, and sort of saving i think the numbers are pretty good that the um low speed limits in oh, cities yeah. do and save like, a lot it, of lives yeah absolutely making people drive slower is a, like a perfect technocratic policy because it's something that people hate that you can just impose and if anyone gets mad you have the data and you can very smugly point to it and say this is literally saving children's lives mm. and it rare is the politician who is psycho children enough to go, that if i'm permitted to run this shit, country you hammer could down <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, so um, congratulations to Liz Truss for having the first actual idea of the entire, uh, not only leadership mm. conference, but I think last several uh, years. Last decade, yeah. I would Beyond say. Beyond the yeah. bit, of course, that we've yeah. all agreed to forget. And of course, it's going yeah. to stimulate the economy, because if she does that, I will be legally forced to go and buy an M4, because what is the <laughs> point of anything? And of course, like, Keir, Keir Starmer will be left, like, you know, he'll, he'll have to say, and I'm really inviting Milo just to do this now, that he wishes for it to go further. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I welcome Liz Truss's uh, 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 attempts to amend the speed limit. I would encourage her to go further by encouraging a voluntary speed for the responsible driver. A suggestion <laughs> of, a, of a good lick Ooh. at which to drive a vehicle. Oh, 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 oh sorry. I, I, I perfect um, Prospero idea has sprung into my head fully formed, which is there's no speed limit in Prospero, but you're, there's um, uh, RFID readers everywhere, and it always measures how fast you're going that's connected to a cryptocurrency wallet. And then if you draw, the slower you drive, the more cryptocurrency you get. That's basically just black box insurance. You have, you familiar with this? Oh, very much. So we've talked yeah, about yeah. it on the show before. Yeah, yeah, that's basically what it does. It just charges yeah. you more for your insurance, like the faster you drive and the faster you take bends. And stuff. But, but what we're basically suggesting is that instead of any regulatory state at all, there's just that insurance. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Sure, great. Liz Truss, are you listening? Trav Trav Travis Vanderzanden, are you listening? This is a wellspring of good ideas. Uh, it's also about that time uh, for us uh, here at TF Acres. Uh, so, from our family to yours, uh, thank you very much for listening. Don't forget, we have a Patreon. It is five dollars a month, and you get a That's second right. episode uh, every week. Yes, mm. cost of living is going up, but uh, our prices are not. Um, that's, that's the trash future price lock <laughs> promise yeah. because Patreon won't let us change it. So <laughs> <laughs> we're putting a triple lock on our price. 
Yeah, we really need more people to sign up in but, order to keep up with inflation but, because we cannot change the price. <laughs> uh, but, but of course, uh, there's always, of course, more content. There's Britonology. There's something that Alice and I are cooking up, but we're both easily distractible. Yeah. Yeah, uh, something meth. that Nate and I are cooking up, but we're also easily distractible. Yeah, so, there's, a lot of, there's, a, there's a lot of new content coming, because the only solution to an economic crisis, as good conservatives, as good libertarians, as we can tell you, is to work harder. Yeah. And that's what we're doing for you, is mm. thinking about starting at yeah. least two more mini-podcasts. And day by day, at almost Weimar Republic levels, Trash Future becomes better and better value for your money. <laughs> <laughs> So don't come complaining to me about the Patreon, okay? <laughs> You're basically paying half what you were four years ago for this show. <laughs> That's right. All right, all right. Well, uh, we'll see you all pretty soon. And uh, yeah, bye, everyone. Bye. 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 bye.